Hello there, I'm Sarah from Inkno. In this video, you guys are going to learn how to create your own interactive PowerPoint presentation. These presentations will keep your students actively engaged with your content throughout the entire lesson. Every teacher's dream, right? So when you're preparing your slides, you can add in hyperlinks, animations, and some transitions. And then during the slideshow, you can annotate on your slides and run interactive quizzes straight through PowerPoint. So let's go through each one of these step-by-step step so that your next presentation is active and engaging. My first tip is to add in hyperlinks into your presentation so that you can move throughout it in a nonlinear way. This will help you save time so that you're not tabbing between every which slide that's in between the two that you're looking for. So for an example on how to do this, I am going to create a Jeopardy review game for my students, but this can be used in a variety of different ways using the same practices. So my goal for this is when a student chooses a question, I want to click on the chosen one and have it directly take me to the slide with that question. So for an example on how to do this, I'm going to do it for the Art for 200 slide. So to do this, I am going to click on the shape. So I've added in a whole bunch of shapes and word art text here. And now when I click on this, I can link it. So I'll click link up here at the top and make sure I'm under a place in this document. And then I'll find slide number six and just hit OK. And that's it. So now when I'm in presentation mode and I click on this button, it will take me to slide number six. And then I can ask the student the question, they can answer. But now I want to go back to that Jeopardy review board main slide. So to do this this time, I'm going to add a photo onto the slide. So I will just go to pictures, online pictures, and add in a photo of Mona Lisa. Once I've chosen the one I want, I can click insert. When it's set, click on the photo and go back up to the insert tab and click link. And this time we'll want to go back to slide number two. So we link it to slide number two and hit OK. So now let's test this out in our presentation mode. So if we go to presentation, if I click art for 200, yep, it took me to this slide. And now the question's over, I can click the photo and it's taking me back to the Jeopardy game board. So you guys can use these practices of linking images or shapes for your own presentation. Now that you guys have the hyperlinks down, let's add in transitions and some animations. So adding these into your presentation will grab students' attentions and keep them super focused on the presentation at hand. So let's start with adding in some transitions to our slides. Just make sure you're on the slide that you want to transition on, and we will click transitions up here at the top. You can expand to see a lot more. When I click an option, it will give me a quick preview to see if I like that transition. So I think it looks pretty good. And I'm going to add in a couple more just for the remaining slides. So I'll just do a simple push. On the right, you guys can see that you can add some sounds and change the duration. In addition, you can easily apply the same transition to all slides by hitting apply to all. So this is really nice if you have a lot of slides and most of them are going to be pretty similar. Next, let's add in some animations. So to do that, I'm going to go actually back to slide number six and add in some answer bubbles here for my students. So once that is complete, you guys, similar to how we did hyperlinks, just click on the shape, but this time we're going to go to animations. So I'm going to be looking at the exit ones and I'll just do a wipe and it will give you a quick preview. So it looks pretty good. So I'm going to add it to my other question bubble. That is the wrong answer. Great. But now I want to edit the order of these animations. So I want them to actually happen at the same time instead of as of right now, they're happening at two different times. So to do this, I can just open up the animation pane and I can click here to start with previous. 
So now you see they both have a number one, so they're gonna go at the same time. Now let's test these two out. So let's go back up to the top and go into presentation mode. And you'll see the first transition is complete. And then when I click on art for 200, you'll see that the push transition is there. And now when I click to reveal the correct answer, you will see that the two bubbles go away and one is left. So now you guys can use this in your own presentations and add in as many animations or transitions as you like. The next tip is to use interactive quiz questions in your PowerPoint presentations. So you can prepare these questions beforehand so that during your presentation, you can receive live student responses. There are a whole bunch of different applications that you can use to do this, like Mentimeter, Poll Everywhere, or Pear Deck. However, we recommend using ClassPoint because everything is integrated already into PowerPoint so that you don't have to have two different applications open. So in my Jeopardy game, I have some questions that are for only one student, but there are other questions that I want to get feedback from my whole entire class. So to do this with ClassPoint, I can just go up to the InkNo ClassPoint ribbon at the top toolbar in ClassPoint and choose the correct question type. So in this case, I'm going to use a multiple choice question and it will add a button here on the slide and I can move it and resize it as necessary. Then in the side panel, you can set your question properties. So I have three options here and it has a correct answer of A. And then I can also change my play options. If you guys want to learn how to make a interactive quiz competition, you can find the tutorial that is linked in the description below. Okay, so now that my question is set, my students can join my class and respond to the questions that I have prepared. So let's get a quick preview of what that would look like. So if I start presentation mode, when I click the question button, students will be able to go through and answer the question. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about ClassPoint, you can find this video linked in the description below. Lastly, while you guys are presenting, why don't you try annotating on your slides? Within PowerPoint, there are three different ways to do this. So the first one is with the draw tab at the top ribbon. So here you can choose a pen and begin writing anywhere on your slide. The pros to this side is that you have the ruler, the ink to shape, and the ink to map. If you do want to annotate on your slides in full screen, you can with limited capabilities, plus it's a little bit more difficult to get to. To do that, we can go into our presentation mode, and in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see a little pen. So if we click on that, you can see the different options that you have. So this time we'll choose a highlighter, and then you can begin annotating anywhere on your slide. In my opinion, however, the easiest way to annotate on your slides is with the ClassPoint toolbar. So with this toolbar, you can define your own pens and it is super easy access, which is key when you want to annotate. So to do that, we can exit our slideshow mode and in the ClassPoint ribbon, just make sure display toolbar is checked. When we go back into presentation mode, we can see all the different pen options here and then we can click and begin annotating anywhere on your slide. In addition with the class point toolbar, if I need more space, I can add in a blank whiteboard slide. And so now this can be used to continue adding in extra information. These two tools are super helpful in creating a presentation that isn't like any other old presentation that you've given before. If you want more information on both the whiteboard and annotating on your slides, you can find these two videos linked in the description below. And those are the tips that I have for you guys to create a more interactive PowerPoint presentation. Hope you've enjoyed watching and will enjoy implementing them into your next presentation. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you'll be notified when our next video comes out. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.